What's good, Boxing World? This is Zeb, your host of On The Ropes. Man, oh man, today has been a lot going on in the sport of boxing. I just want to go back a little bit. First of all, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Coach Calvin Ford because if it wasn't for him opening up his doors to me, I guess about two and a half, I guess two years ago, year and a half, I guess close to two years ago, uh, giving me that interview, letting me come in at that point and, and, and just really become a part of the uh, Upton family. Uh, if it wasn't for him, man, I, I wouldn't be where I am uh, in the boxing world today. So a huge, huge shout out to uh, Coach Calvin Ford. Shout out to, to Coach Coach Kenny, the whole crew. Um, shout out to all uh, the, the boxers of Upton, man. Uh, my dog, uh, Malik Iceman Hawkins, Malik the King Warren, Javante Tank Davis, uh, Mia Killer B. Ellis, let's see, Devon Nicholson. Shout out to him and his dad for opening, uh, opening up their doors to me also, because they also have a gym in uh, the Laurel area. And um, I, I just want to go back a little bit, you know, I've done a whole lot with Jaleel Hackett. And where I first met Jaleel was at Madame Mall for the Javante Tank Davis press conference. Um, it was during that time when everybody was out there. Uh, A.B., uh, Leonard Ellaby, uh, all the media, uh, you name it. <laughs> they were there that day uh, for Tank's press conference because that was during the time when Tank had his uh, fight in Baltimore and during that time I ran into Jaleel's dad uh, Bernard uh, Hackett and he introduced me to his son he said man you, you want to get him so I remember doing an interview with Jaleel at the time he was only 16 at the time uh, top ranked amateurs in the country at the time and um I remember I said, yeah, take take looking for some sparring partners uh, in this camp this time around. And I remember also on that day, Leonard Ellaby said, I quote, he's the future of boxing. And I asked him again, he said, he is the future of boxing. Speaking on Jaleel during that time, a young 16 year old. And I remember my first day at camp uh, for Tank at Upton and who I see come through the door uh, was Bernard Hackett and his son, uh, Jaleel. And I'll never forget that first sparring section uh, with Tank. Tank cut him. And I remember interviewing him afterwards and him talking about that. I said, uh, well, what did you learn from that? You know, he said the speed is a lot different from a pro to an amateur. And that was one of the things he adjusted to. And he did his thing after that man he really got the respect of tank and if he didn't you think he would be back <laughs> at tank's camp hell no he would be back at tank's camp so definitely he showed tank something and gave him a lot of uh, great advice so that just show you a heart of somebody who was at the time 16 years old in camp with a world champion and took a cut from him and bounce back from it. And ever since then, man, he's been a part of the the Upton family, man. Coach Calvin, give him, Coach Calvin, Coach Kenny, give him nothing but praise. And, and, and they love his humbleness and his work tenacity. And he's very intelligent also as well. Now, at the age of 16, man, 17, 16 and a half, 17, graduated two years early just graduated before the pandemic was started he was uh, gonna get ready to sign with Mayweather promotions and everything man so he continuously to still do his thing to this day man and, and Bernard and, and Jaleel man they treat me like family I've, I've done so many interviews with him man and we seem to be growing together starting from the bottom out the mud and, and growing together and Janelle has been doing this thing with, with a lot of professionals, man. So 
I, I have nothing but the utmost respect for his his grind and work tenacity um, as a young fighter, man, who's who's focused on being the best. And like he said, man, uh, one of the questions I asked before about uh, having a zero, and he really didn't see that because at the end of his career, he wanted to be known that that you know he fought the best, win or lose, win, lose or draw. So you got to respect that. Uh, in a young fighter that he's not worried about having the, the perfect record at the end of his career, but having that legacy of, of being the best. So I, I have nothing but the utmost respect and, and thank them for everything, being a part of, of everything that Jalil has done up to this point, you know, in his career. Uh, I've been to many places with uh, Jalil you know, on the road, going on the road with him again. I don't want to get that out, but yeah, going on the road with him again soon. So I'm so grateful for the opportunities that I've been getting uh, with uh, Bernard and Jaleel, and we seem to be growing together. Almost like what you see back in the day with uh, Dante's Boxing Nation and and um, Floyd Mayweather when he was uh Pretty boy Floyd at the time, so it's just good that you start with somebody from the bottom. We both at the bottom and it is growing together. We want to give a huge shout out to the Russells. Hey, they opened me with open arms to their gym. I've done numerous interviews with Gary, uh, interviews with Antoine, Antonio. I want to thank team um, team management of, of of the Russells, man, for giving me the opportunity to come in there. I've, I've even worked out in there uh, many a time, so down for love and respect, man. So, when, when, when I see that, uh, got that call about um, what Gary has said today, and which stems from the interview I did with uh, Jaleel and Bernard, when I asked that question about him moving up from the 126 to 147, and and Bernard and Jaleel giving an honest opinion about it, and man, it really, it really hit the, it really hit the fan at that point. So, but I still want to give a lot of love for that man because it really let people know about my channel. Um, I seen my stuff posted on uh, Dante's Boxing Nation. Shout out to them, and shout out to everyone else doing their grind uh, in this boxing world, man. So. I'm just gonna continue to do what I do. I don't. I don't get in between grown man conversations. That's that's between them, man. And you know, it's all family. You know, families argue at times, man. Like 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 Bernard said, he still see Gary as as a little brother. So I don't get involved with that. And just going back to that, what he had talked about the incident with uh with Antoine and the spawn. If I'm not if, if I'm familiar with that, I, I was there that night actually, man. But I'm, I'm not gonna talk about. It. If that's the same time, I was there that night. It was it was some heavy, intense doghouse sparring going on that night, and it it it, it was something. And like Bernard said, I think that that same night, Jaleel had posted talking about um, Uncle uh, Antoine getting the, getting the best of him and what he learned from that. So. And that was, I think that was sometime last year. That was during the time when um, um, Gary came out to to the Coming to America theme. Remember that during that time? And uh, Antoine was on that card the same night. So if I'm not mistaken, if that's the same time that they talking about, I was, I was there that day. It was damn near like 20 rounds <laughs> for real, man. It was, it was intense. Um, I'm not going to talk about it, you know. And that's the one great thing about it, man. I've 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 had the pleasure of being in so many uh, sparring sessions, man. I, I've seen so much. I've never reported on what happened, and and that's why they re respect the fact and let me come in there and and observe and do what I do. And I, I got to thank Coach Calvin for that because he 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 the one who really set it off for me like that, man, and 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 really got me out there to where I am. Uh, today, so I'm forever grateful for that, man. That's family right there, man. So up in family, Coach Calvin, Coach Kenny, forever internal grateful for that, man. I've, I've seen so much in this, this barn that somebody else probably will report and talk about it. I've, I, I, I don't say a word, man. That's, 
what happens to spawn stay in spawn that's, that's that's exactly what it is I, I i mean it's even been times where i've been allowed to film spawn and and i posted up and i remember times with coach calvin to hit me up and be like hey such and such got a fight coming up i already don't want them to see some of the footage that that you got can you take it down no problem that joint is gone instantly instantly whatever coach calvin want he get that's facts man because He's opened up them doors for me uh, like no one else, man. So I, I respect that, man. And like I said, I've been on the road with Bernard and Chanel, the different areas to see spawn. I've been in many a gyms to see top notch spawn. I've seen a lot go on and and never talk about it. And I think that's why I get so much of the access that I do, man. They they know I'm not gonna be out there trying to film it or, or say, oh, I remember such this happened to such and such up in the gym. Nah, I don't do that, man. So, like I said, I, I'm forever grateful for the experience I had with Coach Calvin, man. I've been in Tank's locker room on three occasions doing fights. I, uh, the, was three? No, two times. The Baltimore and the Atlanta. I flew down to Atlanta for that when he fought uh, Gamboa's back there for that back there um, in Baltimore for that. Came out with that incredible ring walk in Baltimore. That was insane. That was most one of the most insane things to be a part of, man. We was rolling like 100 deep out there in, um, in, in Baltimore, man. Coming to the ring, man. It, that, that, that's an experience I'll never forget. So, man, shout out to, to, to Tank, man. Like right now, he in camp, man. I, and Mia hit me up in the text was like yo did you see that tank got on your shirt man just that was that was love man so I, I truly appreciate that i truly appreciate uh bill haney and uh devin haney man there were some real ones man for real I, I remember um going to the mgm national hub in dc to see um uh devin fight that night and man, his family was, was so opening and welcoming to me. I was actually uh, sitting next to his auntie, man. It, I mean, right behind his auntie. And I remember after the knockout, just talking to her, man, they was like just some real ones, man. And, and showed me nothing but love and respect, man. Um, I had took my wife out to that, that fight that night. So I, I ain't got nothing but uh, love to uh, Devin and Bill Haney. And matter of fact, I remember when I told uh bill had called him up i said yeah i'm coming out vegas he said man whenever you come out hit him up and surely when i did when i came out there i let him know when i was coming out there and next thing you know he set it up for me and devin devin hit me up it was like yo just come out to my house i'm like what <laughs> i was actually surprised i ain't gonna lie man he said just come out to his house man and and you know welcome me into his home and i did the interview with uh devin haney at his house so them some real ones, man. I ain't got nothing but uh, but love for the Haney's, man. And yeah, I hope his son did, uh, does big things. And if I ever come to the time when everybody fighting each other, I ain't got no, I ain't got no opinions on it, man. Cause I ain't got nothing but love for, for all different sides. And and I and I just you know continuously do what I do as far as bringing you interviews with integrity on the fighters where I try to get you to learn more about their background and struggles and how they became who they are. I don't get into all into the other stuff, but you know, if I ask them certain questions and they, and they can go on and on about it, I mean, that's, that's they're at this point in time. So I, I just, I just very grateful for the whole ride that's going on with, uh, on the ropes and, I hope you enjoy it, man. Uh, you gotta hit that share button, hit the like button to help this channel grow, man. It's 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 the hottest thing. I call it the underground boxing media that that a lot of people don't know about. It's like it's like when people didn't know about Nipsey when he was on that underground circuit. They ain't really know about him until he passed, and then really learned all the great works that he had and and all the underground mixtapes that he had. So I, I kind of look at it like that, man. I, I'm on the underground right now. But I'm bringing you, I'm bringing you the hottest interview straight from the source's mouth, man, for real. So, for all those who've been grinding with me, man, checking out the channel, man, please let others know about it, man. Shout out to uh, Ellie Setback, seeing him at um, 
uh, Tank Davis weigh in in Baltimore gave me some great advice. I ain't gonna tell you what he told me, but it was some great advice for real. And I, and I, and I use that joint too. So I, 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 just, I just got a lot of love for a lot of people uh, that's involved with the sport of boxing. So I continue to do, do my thing. Shout out to Floyd, Sam Watson. Uh, shoot. Think. Um, let it L B you know, the, the, the whole Mayweather promotions, man. It's a hey, Derek Curry, Money Team. Hey, that don't show nothing but love to your boy, man. I, I ain't got nothing but love for the Money Team, man. For real, for real. But uh, that's all I had to say, man. Just giving my my assessment of the situation on the ropes. I'm out.